I'm ancient, I'm the lamp. My beginnings are lost in the darkness of the past. I'm not dead, nor I'm alive. I'm undead forever. Hello, my name is Kate, and I'm gonna tell you the story of the most famous vampire in D&D universe. Strat von Zerich is an iconic character in the D&D world, associated with the well-known Count Dracula, who was definitely acting as an inspiration for creating the image. The adventures with Strat existed in a distant editions of the board game, endlessly replayed and remastered with a new content and took on the shape of what we have now. The most recent big adventure with him is the Curse of Strat. Count Strat von Zerich was a vampire and dark lord of Barovia Valley, one of the domains of the Dread, located in a remote corner of the Shadowfell. Strat is considered the signature villain in the Ravenloft setting, and in Dragon 360 he was named one of the greatest villains in D&D universe due to his cunning, intelligence and rich history. But how did he become like this? Let's figure it out. Different editions of D&D report on different date of Strat's birth. In one edition he was born in 299 on Prime Plain in Barovia, which is approximately 1922 in Toril. In other editions he was born in 306. When Strat was still a baby in his crib, Ravenia von Roen had recently hired a midwife to look after him. The servant's name was Lysaga. As a witch who saw the potential in the newborn prince, she secretly cast protective spells on him and at night sneaked into his room to sing magic chants. She also placed a spark of magic in him, ensuring that he could cast spells. Such a sick interest to the baby didn't go unnoticed by the queen and she drove the witch out of the kingdom. Stran is the son of Baron von Zarovich and Ravenia von Roin. He was the eldest brother among three sons of the von Zarovich, Sergei and Sturm. However, Strat didn't know that he had a half-sister, Katerina, aka Madame Eva. She is the daughter of a tiny woman whom the King Barrow, the father of Strat, laid during one of his many crusades. More than 400 years ago, Katerina arrived in Barovia and settled in the courtyard of Strat, working as a maid at the Ravenloft castle. But later, seeing the terrible deeds of Strat, she fled from there, joining the local tribe of Vistani. Before rising in power in Barovia, Strat von Zerovich received the rank of military leader in the year of 320 and became famous as a commander. Although he was a general, he often rushed into battle first, indulging his impulsive nature. For 27 years, Strat fought against the wild tribes of Turks who drove the von Zarovich from the ancestral lands, leading his troops forward and winning at the expense of courage, tactics and own charisma, Strat tirelessly climbed the military ladder. In 346, Baro von Zarovich died without seeing the end of the war. The leading position in the von Zarovich family passed to the eldest son Strat, who at that time was already 40 years old. Determined, he decided to end the war with a crushing blow to the Turks. Strat understood that resources he possessed would not be enough to end the bloody war with one quick blow, and therefore resorted to extreme measures. On the eve of the march, Strat called to a ritual and summoned the demon, the Archanalot in Azure. He sold his war drained soul, asking for victory in the coming battle in return. Archanalot accepted the terms of the contract, considering Strat's soul a nice reward, which he would have received after the death of von Zarovich. In the final battle in 347, Strat squeezed the Tergen army in the valley and crushed them. He occupied the valley and named it Barovia, after his father. He also took over the castle destroyed during the war and ordered to restore it, renaming in his mother's name Ravenloft. The widow Queen Ravenia was afraid of Strahd, the war made him cold and arrogant. Peace made Strahd feel useless and worried about the future. Years of service in the army took their toll. Strahd was disappointed in life and conquests, believing that he had wasted his whole life and use. Von Zarovich didn't want to stop at achieving greatness and continued to study magic in order to achieve even more respect and power. With a penchant for magic, he invited the best magicians and alchemists to Ravenloft Castle to train him. Based on the information from Wallace's travels, Elminster himself met Strahd at some point, because he later uses his fingernails in the medallion for Wallace's travel. The construction of the castle was complete in 349. 
Strat had invited his relatives to live with him. Mother of Anya and youngest son Sergei responded to the invitation and set off to the long journey to Barovia. However, Ravenia, being secretly cursed by Baba Lysiaga, died while traveling without ever seeing the castle named after her. Strat buried her and his father in one of the crypts of the castle. I prayed for guidance, for revenge, and my prayers were answered. Death himself appeared to me, and I made a bargain with him, a pact, sealed with the blood of my rival, who I slew on his wedding day to Tatiana. In 350, Sergei reached his brother's castle, and Strat speaks of him flatteringly in his diaries, envying his youth, body and spirit. They became best friends, and Strat was amused by Sergei, for the fact that he so easily managed to charm women, but at the same time Sergei decided to choose the path of the priest. Constant observations of Sergei fueled inner loneliness in Strat, resentment for the lost years and the desire to start a family. As a priest, Sergei often went to the Blitz Lion village of Barovia and helped the local residents. Strat didn't approve of the behavior, believing that his place was in Castle Ravenloft. Sergei met in the village Tatiana, a local Barovian girl, with whom he fell in love with, and later proposed to her. After Tatiana's appearance in the brother's life, Strat also began to have strong feelings for the beautiful young woman. Every day he was more and more jealous of his brother and his love. He wanted to replace Sergei to live his young life with Tatiana, who would also love him as deeply. His dreams that she would fall in love with him continued, growing ever darker as the months passed and the wedding drew near. He began consulting various spellbooks, but couldn't find nothing that would suit his needs. Strat became ever more rascable, often staying up until the dawn, searching for something, anything that might help him. On rare evenings, he began to sit down at the organ, playing on which briefly distracted him from the gloomy thoughts. One day, flipping through the books with spells, Strat came across a stuck page that he hadn't seen before. In it, he found a strange spell for obtaining the heart's desire. The spell looked quite simple. It was at this moment when the dark powers of the Barovia contacted Strat. Brought to life by his true despair, the powers spoke of the spell ingredients and ritual required to obtain eternal youth life, something that Strahd so longed for. Eagerly, Strahd accepted the offer. In 351, on the wedding day of Sergei and Tatiana, Strahd presented Sergei with a dagger and immediately stabbed his brother with it, following the spell's ritual. As the powers of Barovia demanded, Strahd pulled off the dagger from the chest of the dead Sergei. He looked at the glowing crimson blood on the long blade and took a deep breath. Bringing the bloody knife to his mouth, he licked it, fighting the nausea that welled up within. Drink of the blood, first from the instrument and then from the chalice, the entity had told him. Strat knelt beside the still warm corpse of his favorite brother, placed his lips on the wound and drank. His body was immediately enveloped in warmth, and he felt a returning youth and unbelievable strength. He immediately went to Tatiana, filled with inspiration. She was shocked by the news that scattered around the castle about Sergei, and didn't let anyone near her except Strat, in whom she wanted to find support. Strat approached Tatiana, but instead of comforting her, he began to kiss her and also to tell her about their colorful, wonderful life together and their children. The guy just really made up to her at a very wrong time. Dumbfolded by Strat sayings, Tatiana looked at him and saw a monster with a claws and fangs smeared with blood. Frightened, she ran away from him across the entire castle onto the balcony. There, she rushed down on the Barovian folk. The guard saw Tatiana's tragic death and tried to kill Strat, but now he was immortal and murdered all eyewitnesses. However, there were also good news that day. As he became immortal, a deal with Arcanalot for the receiving the soul of the Strat post-mortem could not be fulfilled. In 351, Strat became a vampire. He calls himself the first vampire, but in fact there were vampires before him on other planes, so maybe here he meant the first vampire of Barovia. Volo met Strat on his adventures and described him as follows in his book. A bat flapped to the ground, twisted and grew amidst a burst of a dark smoke mist in a horrible boiling manner and became a man standing smiling at me. 
He was tall and rich dressed in a half armor and a cloak, and had a skin as pale as chalk, a haughty countenance, aquiline features, pointed ears, dark brows, and imperious stare. His smile was not a nice smile. After the death of Sergei and Tatiana, Strahd was cursed by all those who was close to him that he would ever remain trapped in his kingdom. And the entire Barovia Valley was moved to Shadowfell and turned in a prison from which he could never escape. Strahd began his long reign in Barovia, only a few close associates knew about his secret of immortality, while the inhabitants of Barovia commemorated the coming of the new Strahd to power every few years. According to the sources, the Count has already reached the Strahd the Nines. The close Barovia played a cruel joke. Tatiana's soul could not completely get out of the Cursed Valley. Every few years the cycle repeated and Tatiana was reborn again, but under a new name and without old memories. Strahd knew about the rebirth and being distraught with love, he was eternally looking for her reincarnation in Barovia, hoping that she would fall in love with him again. Several rebirths unknown. Fifty years later, after Tatiana's death, in the year 400, Marina was born, an exact copy of Tatiana. However, her own father that adopted her killed her daughter two months later, so as not to pass her off to Strahd. After another 75 years, in the year 475, a new reincarnation appeared in the image of Olga. With each reincarnation, Tatiana's soul broke, becoming less and less like the original. Olga died from fever in the same year as Strahd found her. By circumstance, when Strahd as a vampire was only 100 years old, another more experienced vampire, Yander Sunstar, enters Barovia. Yander was an elf vampire infected with vampirism by tragic accident and therefore did not have any craving for immortality and power and was, so to speak, a neutral representative of his kind. Yander spent 25 years with Strahd and taught him many vampire skills. Guided to Barovia by the dark powers and the desire to avenge his beloved, Yander was investigating the madness of Anna, a never-aging girl whom he fell in love with in Waterdeep and who died of endless madness and fever. She carried a part of Tatiana's soul, which prompted Yander to look for the answers in Barovia. Yander unearthed the truth about Strahd and became his worst enemy. The two meet in a deadly combat and both barely leave it alive. Strahd spent several years recovering in the crypts after the battle, while Yander, unable to bear the weight of Anna's loss and the opportunity to take revenge, took a sunbus. There were lots of reincarnations of Tatiana, but the last one we know of was Iran in 735, whose fate fell into the hands of the adventurers of Toril. Ravenloft Castle and Strahd keep many secrets that are not available to anyone except Strahd himself. In grief and regret about the loss of Tatiana, Strahd created the Heart of Sorrow and placed it in the tower. The Heart levitates, illuminating the entire tower below. It is capable of absorbing any damage instead of Strahd and recover at dawn. Every day the Heart beats in sorrow and grief over the loss of a beloved one. Trying to calm his grief, Strahd entertained himself with slaves, first torturing them in dungeons and then drying them completely, leaving not a single drop of blood behind. Sometimes he entertained with the slaves in the torture chamber, killing them in sinister ways, reanimating them with spells and mocking them again, torturing their bodies until there was no living place left on them. When he was satisfied, he ordered the disfigured corpses to look after the instruments of torture, which led to their deaths. Strahd longed for family and therefore often turned the young girls with whom he had fun into the vampires, but even this didn't bring him peace. He placed his parents in the family crypt under the lock and key. He also kept there his deceased three wives, Ludmila Vysilevich, Anastasia Krelova, Volin Popovsky. Sergei, who he magically preserved so that his corpse didn't dry out, people close to the court and also prepared the grave for his brother and his wife Sturm and Gisel von Zarovich, but the crypt was empty because Sturm didn't come to Barovia. In fact, Strahd didn't end the von Zarovich dynasty by killing Sergei. The bloodline continued thanks to the Sturm and Gisel, who laid the foundation for a huge legacy that goes to the present day. However, Strahd, being locked in his personal hell, will probably never know about it. Is Strahd a strong character? For his small demiplane Barovia, where he is free to do whatever he wants, he cannot die, he has ears and eyes everywhere thanks to his spies, yes, he's a very strong guy. 
from a technical side based on the 5th edition of D&D, he's a monster of challenge rating 15 with 16 armor class, 150 HP, 3 legendaries, and also spell slots and a very strong attack. Plus, his minions help him and the castle considered a lair, which is a really pain in the butt. So for the characters passing Barovia, he is a very deadly foe. That's all. That's where the story of Strat von Zarevich ends. Each time someone kills him, Strat von Zarevich comes back to life and searches for Tatiana, who comes back to life as well. So this is kind of a romantic and sad cycle indeed. If you like the lore, press subscribe and like button and write in the comments below who else you would like to hear about. And see you next time!